So have you ever heard of um, lone AFib, L-O-N-E, atrial fibrillation? Uh, what is it? It's atrial fibrillation that is occurring less than age 60. In other words, it's atrial fib that's not accompanied by any of the routine risk factors. Less than 60 years old, as you may know or may not, prevalence uh, increases with age. So the older you are, the more likely you are to have atrial fib. And again, no other classic uh, causes such as high blood pressure, hypertension, obesity, cardiovascular inflammation, etc., or inflammatory diseases. Uh, I've reviewed a few articles regarding what causes lone AFib, and we'll go over that for, in just a minute. But before we do, brief introduction, Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D-B-R-E-W-E-R, uh, Dr. Brewer, PrevMed, heart attack, stroke, cancer, disability prevention. And um, why would I be studying, uh, or why would we be talking about atrial fib and, uh, in this group? Well, the number one cause of uh, disability in this country is strokes and a rising cause maybe not number one yet, uh, but growing cause of um, strokes is atrial fib. Now, even that statement is debatable. We can talk uh, later, and we'll, I'll do another video on whether atrial fib actually causes strokes or if something else associated with atrial fib causes strokes. But <clears throat> let's talk about a few things associated with atrial fibrillation. First of all, um, I skipped a page here. That's why I'm shuffling around. So, uh, a couple of studies. I'll, go, I'll show you the study a little bit later. Um, actually, let me show you the couldn't find the study itself. I'm not sure why, but here is one of the references. It's K.K. Patton, um, and uh, clinical subtypes of lone atrial fib uh, in PACE, which is a cardiology magazine, 2005. Now, in several of these studies that I'll quote today, you'll see 2005-2007. Uh, and that's really the latest literature on um, lone atrial fib. I'll tell you why at the end. But we'll keep a little suspense until that point. <clears throat> so they studied people with uh, lone atrial fib. Well, <clears throat> then they started watching them. 8% went on to develop high blood pressure. Uh, obesity is one of the risk factors. Um, We'll talk about, again, obesity maybe a little bit later. Uh, others went on to develop diabetes. Others went on to develop obstructive sleep apnea. Others were found to have inflammatory disease. 28% of the women were found to have inflammatory disease and 8% of the men. Uh, these diseases, rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, irritable bowel disease, or inflammatory bowel disease, Again, these are diseases that, like diabetes, have a huge increase in risk for cardiovascular diseases. So if you're beginning to see a pattern here, yes, it's that, it's that uh, the different aspects of the iceberg, the different perspectives of the elephant, where we have a, um, a metabolic disease that causes hypertension, obesity, diabetes, uh, sleep apnea, inflammatory disease. Now, here's another one though. Endurance athletes, up to a third of the people with quote lone AFib were um, previous ma marathoners or ultra marathoners. I have recently discovered my own atrial fib and I was, I've done not that many, maybe half a dozen marathons and one ultra marathon. Um, First-degree relatives, for, uh, almost 40% had uh, a first-degree relative with atrial fib. Since then, we've discovered the 4Q25 gene, the 
the atrial fib gene. I also have that as well. Um, many of these people were going from paroxysmal, which is you have atrial fib every now and then, to persistent atrial fib. I thought I'd digress for just a second, not that I ever digressed before, um, and cover a couple of things regarding triggers. With um, Here are the triggers that you see in these studies regarding um, setting off an episode of atrial fib. 44% uh, reported sleeping as a trigger. 36% reported exercise. Others reported eating. Uh, especially some reported chocolate as a trigger. Uh, viral symptoms, viral illness as a trigger. Urination. 6% of women reported urination as a trigger for their atrial fib epi uh, episode. And obviously another one for women, menstruation. Some reported drinking soda, maybe the caffeine. Uh, others reported tea. So again, some more interesting information regarding atrial fib. But if you go back to that, to these studies, um, here's one in Europace, uh, risk prediction for lone atrial fibrillation. You start seeing the same thing over and over again. Um, <clears throat> and what you see is uh, what I reported on that first slide. You start seeing the risk factors that we know of. In fact, uh, there is a group, a, um, a focus group on atrial fib. It's called the Atrial Fib Report, and they call themselves the Fibbers. They actually quoted the study that I just, um, the study by K.K. Patton, talking about risk factors for atrial, lone atrial fib. So, <clears throat> this study came out about 2007, and it started to put the end, or maybe the last uh, nail in the coffin for lone atrial fib. Basically, what they're saying is, look at it. You may get qu what we thought was lone atrial fib, but after you start getting deeper and deeper into it, maybe 2% of people that have atrial fib don't really have a risk factor. When we went through that research, we maybe did discover a couple of things new. We discovered genetics. We discovered this thing with um, endurance athletes. Um, but here's basically the state of the art at this point. <clears throat> this was published in, uh, this is a review in Europace by Schunderward, uh, Schmidt, Penn, and Gelder. And this was uh, May of 08. Basically what they're saying is new risk factors for atrial fib causes of the not so lone atrial fib. And that's the point. Um, at this point, we really don't, uh, there's less and less debate whether or not there's actually a thing such as lone atrial fib. Uh, atrial fibrillation does appear to be part of that uh, of a constellation of problems. Um, like we've said, we covered them early on. Getting older, um, obesity, cardiovascular inflammation, diabetes, hypertension, um, <clears throat> and uh, for atrial fib specifically, a history of uh, endurance ath athlete uh, activities and 4Q25. So, <clears throat> um, tell me what you think. If you've had um, exposure to this, if you know anything about the topic, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, I really don't think there's a whole lot behind that old diagnosis of uh, lone atrial fib. I, I'm thinking it's uh, probably time to put, put that in the wastebasket and keep it there. Thank you.